yeah, this is me from the future after recording the Jaws review. I forgot to tell you a fun fact. I have an uncle by marriage that was actually a carpenter on the set of the movie. Just interesting story to tell that goes along with the movie, and I don't know when I'm going to get another chance to bring this up. Okay, just in time for the 4th of July, it's time for Jaws, kind of, not kind of, a very intimidating movie to review. What can I say about this one that hasn't already been said? It's a masterpiece, one of the greatest films of all time, blah blah blah, we all heard this all before. So, what's my spin gonna be on it? To be honest, I really don't know. This film is just, the story is super simple and basic, and it just worked really well. They trimmed a lot of fat from the books and made the characters more likable, which the only character in the book that's truly halfway likable is Brody, and that's really because you're throwing him a lot of mercy points because of the stressful situation he finds himself in. Unlike the book, Brody's not from Amity in this, and it's his first summer as the chief of police. And it works really well. We see kind of the culture clash where Brody's like, would knows if he was in New York, things would be done a certain way, but there's all these small town politics and what not that he just would not have had to worry about back in New York. There's a shark on the loose killing people. He wants the beaches closed, but the city council and the mayor want the beaches open. I will say that's one aspect the book did do better overall, though I do think the movie is superior, is that it does go into more detail about how one bad summer can just completely ruin a small beach community like Amity. It talks about how it did another community in the book, and it shows even the effects of how fear of the shark is already crippling the local economy, and I'm not taking that as a slight against the movie, but if you read the book, you're at least more, okay, you know, I kind of understand their hesitation not to close the beaches. Where in this book, it feel it's kind of mess, meant, mentioned in glancing, but you don't get to see the effects. Not that that's a negative on the movie, because this is more of a simple A to Z adventure story, and like a lot of great monster movies, the shark is a metaphor for Brody's fear of the water. I know this is kind of, you could almost argue in a way too that this is a two-act movie. The first act is the setup for getting everyone on the boat, and then the second act is what happens on the boat. I know it's not two acts, but you can kind of break it down into those two halves. And all the characters are really well written and really well played. You do get a feel for this community. The politics, you begin to sympathize with Brody really fast. And the film even does a good job visually conveying his fear of the water, like the scene where Alex Kittner gets killed. That scene is really about Brody's fear of the water, and even though he's on an island, how it affects him. And being on an island, I'm sure it's more omnipresent. And it was just nice how it can convey those things without telling you much. It doesn't even really mention him being afraid of the water until they have Hooper over for dinner. And it was a great touch. Richard Dreyfus was phenomenal as Hooper. Uh, Robert Shaw as Quint. Quint. What can I not say about that role? It was phenomenal. I know that him, he was very antagonistic towards 
Dreyfus on set. I wonder if it, that was how he was, or... Because from the accounts, he got along with, a. Uh, I can't think of his name now. The Brody actor, Roy Scheider. He got along with him a lot better, so I just wonder if... Uh, Shaw was just a very method actor, and because... Quint and Hooper were very antagonistic that he just wanted to keep that on set. I'm not sure, but he would show, think, tell him things like, you can't do 50 push-ups. I bet you couldn't dive from the top of the orca into the water. And he would just constantly push and goad and just agitate those raw nerves. But I do think that really shine through with their antagonistic nature on screen and probably the best scene I know I'm not regurgitating anything that hasn't said before but was Quint's Indianapolis speech just the whole setup that they're comparing scars and laughing and when he mentioned he had a tattoo removed and Hooper makes a joke Robert Shaw just his whole demeanor changes, and he doesn't even get angry or snap, which you know this is going to be a heavy story. He just puts his hand on Richard Dreyfuss's arm and says, that's the USS Indianapolis, and he tells the story, which at this time, it wasn't long that what happened with the Indianapolis was finally made public, and we see this very loud bombastic, just aggravating person, just in a very calm, monotone, deliberate voice as he's telling the story of the Indianapolis taking the torpedoes and the sharks killing his fellow sailors. And you could just see how the how horror traumatizing this experience was for him. He's like a completely different Quint than in the rest of the movie. He's more vulnerable, more soft-spoken. He just tells his story, and it is a terrifying story, especially the scene where he talks about finding, bumping into a friend of his in the water who he had found had been bitten in half below the waist. And, you know, that wasn't in the movie. That was written... I mean, that wasn't in the book. That was written for the movie. Benchley had actually said if he had known about the Indianapolis, why he was writing the book. And that's how recently it was actually made public. It wasn't made public till after the book came out. But he said had he known about it, he would have absolutely used it in the book. And he did, even though it's not mentioned in the book, he considered it basically canon to Quint. And just even how this film is a perfect disaster of things not working, forcing them to keep the shark off camera as much as possible, and it works best because the movie's more backloaded with shark scenes. And yeah, I think had they had a lot more shark in the beginning of the movie, it would have burnt the audience out a lot faster. This was just the right mix. This film was like one of the even cases of you can't have a film like this made nowadays. First of all, they would never trust a brand new director with a big budget film like this, and the studio would be scrutinizing everything he did. No doubt this movie would be made by a committee. The studio would take over for this and that in reshoots. The producers, Zanuck and Brown, were actually not sending all the storyboards to the studio, not sending all the dailies. They were keeping the more ambitious stuff under wraps so the studio wouldn't interfere. You just wouldn't see that now. This is a movie that, near-perfect movie that moves along at an absolute perfect pace and tells its story masterfully. It's one of the best movies ever made, one of my all-time favorites, and 
I haven't seen the 4K, don't plan to, I don't care to spend all that money to upgrade, but I remember this restored version was a huge deal when it came out, and I remember when I, how excited I was when I finally got my hands on it. I called the cab, and that cab actually took 40 minutes to get me back home, because I was grocery shopping and after I was done I ran into the, this was before we got the super Walmart I was at an Ingalls I ran into the super Walmart to buy this as soon as grocery shopping was done and I wanted to really see how good the restoration is so I popped this in my blu-ray player and it had looked it looked like it was just shot that year the picture was so crystal clear and beautiful I watched that movie multiple times that week just because I was so awestruck with how good the restoration process actually was. Honestly, you can I'm giving Jaws the highest possible rating in A+. Perfect 4th of July weekend movie. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Happy 4th of July over and out.